Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on Uninsured Services Solutions 101. Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Moral Sanasian, and I'm the Director of Client Success at Dr. Care. Before we get started, I'm going to share some webinar logistics. Just so you know, all attendees are in listen-only mode. We are recording this webinar, so it will be available to you after the event. If you have any questions during the webinar, please submit your questions in the Q&A feature. Your questions and your identity will be kept confidential and only seen by us. We will do a Q&A session to answer some of your questions at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, let's get started. We are very excited to be sharing this webinar with you all featuring our new division, Doctor Services Group. Doctor Services Group is your complete solution for effectively managing all of your practice's uninsured medical services. We provide doctors with resources and tools to help with patient education, full service administration and revenue generation. From patient education to communications and administration, we take the majority of time consuming tasks related to billing uninsured services off your plate so that you can focus more on patient care. Today, we have a special guest, Jacqueline Lebo from our new division, Doctor Services Group, who will be our main speaker for today's webinar. I'll pass it on to Jacqueline. Thank you, Morel. Hi, everyone. My name is Jacqueline and I am the regional manager here at Doctor Services Group. Thank you again for joining us today. Let's face it, many physicians are not the best at handling payment for uninsured medical services. The purpose of today's program is to provide you with some guidance on how to bill uninsured medical services effectively so that you can get billings under control, educate your patients, and realize improved revenue. For today's agenda, we are going to first look at the most common misconceptions of uninsured billing that we hear from our doctors day in and day out and provide some light on these misconceptions. We will then go into how uninsured service billing works and the best practices in managing and billing your uninsured medical services. We'll also pass over the mic to our guest speaker, Dr. David Silver, to share his experience with uninsured services and end off with a Q&A session with Steve Switzman from Dr. Services. So let's start with the most common misconceptions of uninsured services we hear from our doctors. The first misconception we often hear is that it's too time consuming to administer. This is false. Billing for uninsured medical services isn't time consuming if you put in the effort to create a well-organized and structured process when collecting for uninsured services. In addition, if you assure that you are following the correct guidelines provided by your college, you are less likely to incur errors, which result in extra work fixing them. However, we do know that sometimes physicians are just too busy and are not able to optimize their practices. Many of these physicians turn to third parties, such as us at Doctor Services, to administer their uninsured services, as we can take care of 95% of all the administration of uninsured services. Now, the second misconception is that doctors think that patients will inundate their practice with questions. This is also false. If your practice is offering an annual fee for the very first time, of course, you will naturally receive some calls from patients wanting more information. For this reason, that is why many physicians prefer to use a third party to administer their uninsured medical services program and can rest assured that these calls will now go straight to their third party like us at Doctor Services. We have the staffing capabilities to handle all patient inquiries and questions. In the past couple of decades of business, we have never encountered a huge influx of inquiries. From our experience, after the first year of implementation, patients understand the program and the number of calls naturally decreases. If you are working with us, the annual fee letter that we send to patients on your behalf includes our phone number. As a result, the majority of calls actually come directly to us. That way, your staff can stay focused on what they do best, providing medical care. Now, the third misconception is that patients won't pay for an annual fee or block fee. This is false. When surveyed, patients usually tell doctor services that there are two primary reasons why they pay for an annual fee instead of fee for service for uninsured medical services. The first reason is that it's convenient. 
For many patients, it's easier to pay one annual fee instead of dealing with the hassle of multiple invoices. This is particularly true for patients who know that they will utilize a number of non-covered administrative services over the course of the fee period. The second reason is it's a display of appreciation. Doctor services regularly hears patients say they sign up for their physician's annual fee out of respect for their doctor's work, and most patients understand that administrative services take up valuable staff time and resources. So now let's move on to part two, which is how uninsured bill services billing works. So let's start with the basics. What are uninsured services? Uninsured services are provided to patients that are not deemed medically necessary services that are normally requested by the patient or patient representative. Examples of some common uninsured medical services include missed appointments or procedures, prescription renewals by phone or fax when requested by the patient or patient's representative, and completion of third-party forms and reports. So how does it work? Uninsured services are paid by the patients. Generally, suggested rates and fees are provided by the provincial medical associations, but at the end of the day, the rates you charge are up to you. We know that there are some patients who may not be able to pay for the uninsured services based on the charges the medical associations provide. So the rates are based on up to the doctor's discretion. We will go over some factors to consider when calculating fees later on in this webinar. Please note that there are slight variances uh, in how provinces manage uninsured services. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A section. So let's talk about office policies. There are practical guidelines you can follow when billing a patient directly for uninsured services to help make the process as comfortable and efficient as possible. In order to establish an office policy on billing for uninsured services, you should first determine one, the uninsured services patients will be directly billed for, two, the fees attached to each of those services, three, any exemptions or discounts such as for seniors or those on fixed incomes, and lastly, collection procedures and policies. Your office policy on direct billing for uninsured services must be specific and detailed so that it is fully understood by your staff and your patients. It should allow flexibility to adapt to any unique or unexpected circumstances that may be encountered. In calculating fees for uninsured services, physicians should take into consideration some or all of the following factors to help determine how much they should charge. One, the nature and complexity of the matter. Two, experience and expertise of the physician. Three, time spent with and or on behalf of the patient. And lastly, the cost of materials not included in the fees for uninsured services. So now let's take a look at the best practices in managing and billing your uninsured services. So we want to make sure that you are optimizing your revenue and getting paid for the services you provide for uninsured billings. There are a couple of best practices that we will be sharing today. The, four, the first one is incorporating a block fee. A block fee is defined as a flat fee charged by a physician for predetermined set of insured, uninsured services during a predetermined period of time. If you do choose to offer a block fee, you must also offer uninsured services separately at individual cost to patients. Patients cannot be required to pay a block fee. In Ontario, for example, the CPSO policy on block fees states that you may use third-party companies, such as us at Doctor Services, to assist in administrating a block fee or payment for uninsured services. Third parties who are asked to administer block fees or payments or for uninsured services are acting on the physician's behalf. The second best practice is keeping patients informed. Some patients may be surprised to discover that not all of their medical needs are covered under their province's medical plan, and that you must pay directly for certain non-medically necessary uninsured services. Amongst many of the benefits of using doctor services, one is that we communicate directly with patients by distributing a personalized and customized letter from their physician to help keep them informed and educated on uninsured medical services. We understand the importance of patient education and ensuring patients understand which services are and are not covered by their provincial health plan. We know the importance of how this will impact your practice. This frees up valuable time and resources for your medical practice to focus on other more important medical duties. Now we know that managing your uninsured medical services on your own is extremely time consuming for you and your staff to administer. Most physicians simply do not have the resources and time 
And working with Doctor Services, we take it all off your plate and add some sophistication to the entire process of collecting for uninsured medical services. Doctor Services help manage all your uninsured services. And the three main benefits are patient education, full service administration, and revenue generation. At Doctor Services, we can fine tune and customize a solution to your practice and your unique needs. We send out a customizable annual mailing to your practice that offers patients a choice between an annual fee program or fee for services as needed. There is absolutely no out-of-pocket cost to you by working with Doctor Services. We take our agreed upon percentage and simply provide you a check at the end of each month. It is also a free communication tool with your patients. We always encourage our physicians to send out a clinic newsletter along with their mailing. That way their patients stay informed and educated on clinic policies on a yearly basis. As well, we provide unlimited email blasts free of charge to your patients regarding any topic you please. The reality is each year, more and more non-medically necessary services are being delisted from their province's medical plans. So it is important to have this program in place to make it easy for you and your staff to be keeping track and charging for these services. In summary, you should be collecting for all of these services and you should not feel guilty for it. If you do not already have a current policy in place for uninsured services, or you feel there could be significant improvements to your current policy, send us an email and we can help customize a solution for you. So now let's move on to the last part of our webinar. We've been around for over 17 years and have had thousands of physicians working with us throughout Canada. One of our doctors is joining us today to speak on his experience with uninsured services and working with us. I would like to introduce Dr. David Silver. He has been a family physician for over 13 years practicing in, in the Toronto area. Dr. Silver has been working with Dr. Services since 2011, and he is here today to provide us with some insight on how his experience has been working with us at Dr. Services and how he's been so successful over the years managing his uninsured services. So thank you, Dr. Silver, for joining us today. I would like to first start off by having you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about kind of your practice and how long you've been working with Dr. Services. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so I work, I'm in a five doctor faux family health organization in Midtown Toronto. Uh, we opened our clinic in 2009 and we started with doctor services uh, not too long after that in 2011. So we've been with them for a little over a decade right now. Uh, when we started out, we were actually a four doctor faux. Um, and our situation might be a little bit unique in that three of us were starting from scratch. We were all new grads building new practices. Whereas one of our four, uh, my dad, um, was, uh, and hence the Generations Family Health Center name, um, he was bringing his fairly large practice over with us as well. So from the doctor services perspective, uh, three of us uh, were instituting our, our uninsured program, uh, uninsured services program right from the beginning, whereas uh, one practice was sort of making a bit of a transition in the middle. Amazing. So why do you feel utilizing doctor services is valuable to your patients? And why do you think it works well for your practice? I mean, I think the main thing for us is that it really just gives us that element of remove from our our day to day clinical practice that we, that we do working with our patients very intimately. Uh, I like to think I'm a decent physician, at least hopefully. Um, but as a businessman, um, I mean, again, at the very least, I like to have that remove from again that that sort of intimate relationship that you have with your patients. So. Just simple things like even generating an invoice, trying to collect on those invoices. Um, it's, I don't wanna have anything to do with that. I don't want that to interfere with, uh, again, the patient doctor uh, relationship. So having that elephant removed really makes a big difference, both in terms of helping to, to drive home the, the fact for patients that this is work that's being done on their behalf, um, that's being requested, um, and it should be remunerated as such, and, and also that there's an expectation that they actually should be paying up front. So uh, again, those invoices coming from somewhere else, associated with our practice, obviously, but also uh, trying to collect, um, it makes a big, big difference for us. Absolutely. So before introducing this to your practice, were you ever hesitant on how your patients would react? Um, no, not really. I, I think, again, I, we might have been a bit of a unique case in that, certainly for my practice, I was starting out from scratch. So again, this is something that we were able to institute from day one. Um, so there wasn't really that opportunity for my patients, at least, um, to sort of be surprised by this. Now, that being said, patients were coming over from 
A lot of them coming from other positions, whether transferring or the positions retired. So some of them may have been used to, to block fees and, and uninsured services in the past, and some of them might not have been. But um, it, what really made it a lot easier for us is just this is how it worked in our office. And, and we, when patients were coming in and, and they're doing some of that intake uh, from a medical perspective, trying to get their chart set up, um, that was also part of what was provided to them for that, with that intake visit, that this is how our office works, giving them the list of, of what's covered, uh, what's expected, and, and how the uninsured, uninsured services program works. Okay, great. So by introducing the block fee program into your practice, has it made a significant impact on your revenue? Absolutely. Um, and I know it's not necessarily within within the scope of this talk, too, but we also use a secure email service through doctor services. Um, and, and no question, um, having that and having that tied to our uninsured services program, we brought that in after a couple of years already working with that with doctor services. And, and again, having them tied, we definitely saw a jump even from our, our baseline. Um, and again, it's part of just patients recognizing that there is value in this. I mean, our patients really love having the ability to connect with us online, um, but also recognizing that, that this was an investment on our behalf, that, that this is work that we're doing on their behalf, um, and that it, it's something that as long as it's not covered by OHIP, that it needs to be remunerated in some way. So having that connection, having that tied to the Block B program, having that tied to the Uninsured Services program, uh, unquestionably, we saw a bump uh, and we continue to see pretty steady income coming in as a result of that. Absolutely. So overall, would you say the process has been professionally managed and easy to follow for you in your clinic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what's been really nice for us is that, um, I mean, as our practice has grown, I mean, we expanded from four doctors to five as our bigger practices have gotten bigger and busier. Um, what's been great about doctor services is having um, having direct contact with the people who are responsible for administering the program. And they've been really incredibly responsive to us. Uh, I'm sure every practice is different, every clinic is different. And sometimes we have had some fairly unique or different requests or needs from them. Uh, they've helped us to set up a website uh, that's been again, invaluable. Uh, again, the email program as well. Um, a little bit off topic, but I mean, certainly the last couple of years, plus year and a half really with COVID, um, we did put our uninsured services program on hold. Felt not really appropriate to be billing people for things like prescription refills when they can't really come into the office when a lot of what we were doing, especially initially was virtual. But despite that, despite the fact that we weren't billing it, um, what Dr. Services was able to do for us is really get out some of our, our email blasts. We were sending out email communications about every two weeks at the height of the pandemic which our patients really, really appreciated. We got a lot of positive feedback about that. And uh, it was just made that much easier by having, having connection through doctor services to adjust and accommodate and, and make those changes on the go as, as things were changing. Amazing. Well, it's been a pleasure to work with you, Dr. Silver. And thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate you kind of talk, taking the time to share your experience with do working with doctor services and your success story of collecting for uninsured medical services. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Have a good day, everybody. So now we're going to close off with some questions from the attendees. Uh, if you have a question you would like to ask, please submit the question in the Q&A feature in the Zoom console. Your questions and your identi identity will only be seen by us, and I will read out your questions, but will keep your identities confidential. I would like to invite Steve Switzman, the managing partner at Dr. Services, to join us for the Q&A portion of the webinar. So Steve, uh, we have a question that just came through. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you provide third-party billing? Uh, yes, absolutely. We, we do do that. We have, uh, there's, there's various ways of doing it. We have a portal um, that, uh, that many of our clients prefer to use, which is a simple drop-down menu. Um, as long as all the information is entered cor uh, correctly, we can help you do that. We send out the invoices. Uh, five weeks later, if uh, if that insurance company or that law firm or whoever it may be does not uh, pay that bill, we send them a very, very friendly reminder, just uh, informing them that that hasn't been cleared up yet. Uh, we also, as part of that service, that um, the individual invoicing service, whether it's to patients or to third parties, uh, we have monthly reports which go back to the clients. Uh, we work with the doctors and the offices to create the right uh, reports that, uh, that they can use to make sure that they're on top of all of those uh, invoicing requirements. And what if I don't feel comfortable or right charging for these services? It's understandable. 
I mean, as Dr. Silver uh, mentioned briefly, it's uh, he'd like to focus on patient care and not having to deal with invoices because it can be sometimes an un uncomfortable experience. But the bottom line is you deserve to be paid for services that you render. Um, that is 100% um, true. Um, so the bottom line is serve these services, as Jacqueline mentioned as well in the presentation, are not going to go away. The provincial health plans are always looking at trying to delist more and more services, which they deem to be non-medically necessary services. And, you know, the uncomfortability factor is, is understandable, and that's why doctor services exist, because we can take a lot of that off your plate, uh, and we love to deal with patients. We can spend 20 minutes talking to a patient if they need, um, and really those calls are just trying to uh, get some understanding, and, and we're there on the phone. Uh, in person speaking to these patients. So uh, understandable, but again, it's uh, you deserve to be paid for all services you provide your patient. Next question, does a program like this only work in high-end areas? No, um, we have uh, in Toronto alone, hundreds and hundreds of physicians uh, across all geographical uh, areas, all demographic areas, uh, they all do well. Um, it's a good program to put in place, but we will also work with you uh, specifically it, taking into account your situation, your demographics, your geographical area to come up with the right plan for you, because it is true that not all areas uh, should be charging the same. And again, that's that's where we will work with you directly to come up with the right plan. Perfect. Now, what if we are currently collecting all the services in cash? Would a block fee program still be useful? Hundred uh, percent. It's well, certainly it's 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 uh, it's tricky these days. Not all patients like to go into the office and just pay the block fee while they're in the office. Although that is absolutely acceptable. We again, we'll work with you to explain to you. We don't need to go into it here how the, how you can handle all uh, payments. Uh, but when we when we send a a mailing out, because let's be honest, a lot of patients still prefer to get snail mail. Uh, we do mix that together with emails as well, so we're not certainly ignoring emails. Um, we're using more and more of them, but within that mailing that we send out to patients, there is a, you know, these are all small things, which I'm not going to spend too much time going into here, but we include a prepaid envelope, which is huge. I mean, it just, it is factually a uh, a significant uh, reason why patients can just drop their checks. Remember those checks? into uh, into the envelope and they they send it back or they send their credit card information back in that prepaid envelope. It just makes the whole process much easier. So yeah, absolutely. You can take cash, you can take payments in the office. We have a very simple way of informing us because we also like to send out receipts uh, to all patients who pay the annual fee. And that's just a, a communication or a dialogue that we'll have together as we move forward. Perfect. Uh, now, another question here. Does Doctor Services Group need access to our EMR to provide these services, or are these fees and communications totally separate from the patient chart? Yeah, at, the, at, at this point in time, it. Uh, I mean, the EMR we only need access to because we, in order to come up with the correct mailing list, we need to pull the data, just top line information, address, and and sex, and so on and so forth. Um, in terms of integration into your EMR, in terms of marking charts, uh, that is, as Jacqueline said, 95% of the work that we do. The 5%, although we do provide very in-depth reports as to activity for uh, your block fee, uh, the entering of, you know, there are, in, it doesn't matter which EMR you're using, there is a space for block fees that just needs to be updated. Uh, with the reports that we provide by the office staff. So, uh, you know, that's something that we continue to work on. We're not there yet in terms of integrating with all EMRs. Um, but again, that is on our agenda going forward. Does that answer the question, Jacqueline? Yeah, that's perfect. Because someone else had asked as well, how much extra work is this for your staff using a separate program as it is not through the EMR? Yeah, so I mean, I'll just, gonna, I'll just comment on that very, very quickly. I mean, uh, uh, you know, we do take the majority of work off the table. Uh, some offices that we work with, you know, their staff are involved uh, with the process. Um, and, you know, when you talk about the block fee, you're going to certainly get a percentage of patients that pay the block fee. But there's also a lot of patients who choose to pay as they go. And that's where the staff come into play. I mean, we, we do have some offices where, where the staff are very, very good at, at making sure that, you know, those 10, 15, 20, $25 invoices are paid in the office if they're if the patient comes in. Um, but, you know, although we take a lot of that off their plate, there is still work that can be 
can be provided by the office should you choose. But it's really important uh, to be disciplined in this whole process of making sure, coming back to that question of billing for everything that you should rightfully bill for. Perfect. So someone else had asked, how much is the annual block fee for uninsured services or how do you recommend determining the block fee amount? Yeah, again, that's just a, a conversation we have. I mean, we've been around a very long time. We've worked with doctors in all areas. There is an average, uh, I suppose, and depending on where you are uh, in the city, in the province. Um, so, you know, those, those rates have certainly increased from when we started. Uh, and it is, you know, we because we work with doctors a long time, you know, we try to determine what is a fair and reasonable annual fee cost. I mean, the thing that we've introduced over the past few years, I think maybe even with generations six or seven, eight years ago is, you know, we started to introduce senior and senior couples rates because they tend to use a lot of the services. Um, and that's been hugely successful in terms of revenue generation for those offices. So, you know, the, the, the fees are certainly palatable um, for, for those patients, should they look at the, the fee guide, which is included in your letter. And if they're determining whether or not it makes sense for them from a financial perspective, pay the annual fee. But again, as Jacqueline said, a lot of patients just pay that annual fee out of respect for their doctor. And we have notes, we get cards, we get all sorts of things. Um, uh, and then we just forward that in terms of patients, uh, appreciation of their doctor. So that's another reason why they pay, but. We will determine the rates as we talk to talk to the doctor. Perfect. Um, and last question here. How do we keep track of who is enrolled into block fees and who is not? Yeah, we again, it comes back to the reporting structure that we have in place, which is um, so all there is uh, the doctor services online tool, which the offices all have access uh, to. Uh, which gives them in real time who has paid the annual fee. So if Jim Smith comes in, says he, you know, needs a service, they can just click the, uh, the drop down menu. It'll give them all the information only with regard to the annual fee and invoicing details. Um, they're never, the offices are never in the dark as to who's paid the annual fee. Uh, and again, when they receive their payments, their checks uh, on a monthly basis, they get a full I mean, I guess sometimes we might be criticized for uh, giving too many reports. So we will work with the offices to streamline those reports just so so with the check you get backup reports. So you get bad address reports, which is great for your uh, updating your uh, EMR with correct uh, uh, address details for your patients. Oh, excuse me, my <laughs> light went off in my boardroom, but I'll just finish up. Um, uh, you get those reports, you get email updated reports uh, with your check. Uh, you get all the patients that have paid the annual fee, and then you get all sorts of reports with regard to the individual invoicing, outstanding reports, again, just so, just so uh, uh, the offices are aware of what's happening in that world of uninsured services. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for answering all the questions. Hey. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, so I'm going to pass it off to Morale to wrap up the webinar. Thank you everyone for joining us today for our webinar. I'd like to extend a special offer to all of our webinar guests joining us today. Until November 30th, 2021, we are offering all attendees our doctor services groups uninsured services for 25% off of your annual fee. If you'd like to learn more, please email us and we can help you get started. Thanks again to Jacqueline and Steve from Doctor Services and Dr. Silver for joining us today. For the questions that we didn't get to address, we will reach out to you directly to answer your question. Thank you to all attendees for joining us on our webinar. We will send you an email of the recording in the next couple of weeks to share with your fellow doctors. In the meantime, if you have any questions or feedback on this webinar, please feel free to contact us anytime. Jacqueline's contact information is listed on this slide. We'll see you at our next webinar. Take care. <laughs>